Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Pepper Jack Cornbread Biscuits. That's right, I'm going to show you how to make beautiful buttery biscuits that actually taste like cornbread. And why would you want to learn such a thing? Well, maybe you're serving a soup or a stew, and you can't decide between cornbread or biscuits. Well, with these beauties, you don't have to. You can have your biscuit and cornbread too. And since we are currently right in the middle of soup and stew season, I feel like the timing for this is perfect. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by mixing up our dry ingredients, which we'll start with some self-rising flour. And as usual in the written recipe, we'll tell you exactly what to do if you don't have that. And then we'll also of course need some cornmeal. And then we'll finish up with a little bit of white sugar, some salt, and then last but not least, some baking soda. No, not baking powder, baking soda. And that's it, we'll take a whisk and give this a mix. And that's it, once that's been mixed, we can go ahead and add our butter, which as usual I've cubed and popped in the freezer for about 15 minutes, so it's really, really cold. And then we'll grab our trusty pastry cutter, also known as a pastry blender, and we'll make sure all that butter's coated in flour before we start going around, pressing down. And what's happening is those wires are cutting through that butter, and then those cut pieces are getting coated in flour, and then they're being cut again. And when you first start the process, some of that butter is going to get gunked up on the wires. So every once in a while, we're going to have to stop and clean it off. And then we'll continue cutting or blending until our flour mixture looks like very coarse crumbs. And if everything goes according to plan, once we get to this point, the smallest pieces of butter should be about the size of lentils. And the biggest pieces may be the size of peas. And then every size in between. And it's all these little particles of flour coated butter it's going to give our biscuits that beautiful flaky texture. And then once we're happy with that, we'll go ahead and make a well in the center with a fork. And we will pour in our ice cold buttermilk. And we'll go ahead and stir all this together until the mixture comes together enough where we can press it together with our hands. And the reason we're using a fork is so we don't overwork this. All right, if we work this too much with our hands at the beginning, we're actually going to kind of press and smear that butter into the flour, which can cause our biscuits to become tough and dense. So you're going to be responsible for not doing that. I mean, you are after all the Brock Purdy of making sure these biscuits aren't too sturdy. But by doing this step with the fork, we should be fine. So we will stir and press and toss and fold with a fork until about a minute or so later our mixture looks like this. At which point we'll stop and get in there with our hands to basically see where we're at moisture-wise. Okay, if it feels super wet and sticky, we'll add a little more flour. And if it feels super dry and refuses to clump together, we can always add a little more buttermilk. But this seemed just about right, which means we can transfer everything onto a lightly floured surface. And then we'll use our hands to press this out into a square. And once that's been accomplished, we can lightly dust the top with flour and we'll grab our rolling pin. And we'll roll this out into a square, about 11 or 12 inches across. And yes, those edges are definitely gonna crack at this point, but that is of no concern. And once we finish rolling, we can kind of press the sides in a little bit, just to square it off a touch. And no, it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, I don't want you to make it perfect. And then what we'll do is take our bench scraper, and we'll cut that in two pieces right across the center, and then we'll carefully slide our bench scraper underneath one of the pieces. And once we can safely move it, we will place that on top. And then we can use the side of our bench scraper to kind of even things up. And that's it, our first layering step is done, which means we'll grab our roller again, and we'll roll this back out into a square, somewhere close to the same size we just did. And yes, once again, we're gonna have jagged edges. And once again, we don't care. All right, just use your hands and or bench scraper to even those sides out a little bit. And then once that's set, we will cut this into quarters and do another set of layers. Except this time, instead of layering two pieces, we're gonna stack all four of these pieces up in no particular order. In fact, I went out of order just to bother some people. But the point is it doesn't matter. Just stack those up and square things off the best you can. And then what we'll do is scatter a little bit of that extra flour over the top. And we will grab our rolling pin one more time. And we will roll that out into about a 12 inch square again. Except about halfway through, what I like to do is stop and flip this over to make sure the bottom's not sticking. But also the top surface is probably gonna be smoother. And I actually want that side down for the next step. So we'll dust that with a little bit of flour and flip it over. And we will continue rolling until, like I said, we have a square about 12 inches by 12 inches. Or at least something relatively close. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and grate over our pepper jack cheese. 
right? Not too much. We're just using two ounces here. And after grating, I usually try to distribute it as evenly as possible, but it was kind of sticking to my fingers. And in hindsight, I really should have put that cheese in the freezer so it was nice and cold and easy to work with. But then I thought to myself, just go ahead and dust on a little bit of flour. Then it definitely won't stick. And it did not work at all. In fact, it seemed to stick even more. So the point is, not everything works. But you know what? It was fine. I decided that cheese was exactly where I wanted. So I grabbed my bench scraper and performed the next move, which is to fold the bottom third up and over like this. And then we'll give that a little press. And then we'll fold the other third over the top. And we will gently but firmly press everything together. And we'll give that a light dusting with flour. And then we'll give this one last rolling, but not too much. We want to keep this pretty thick. Okay, I'm going to roll this, keeping that rectangle shape, until it's just over a half inch thick, which is going to hopefully allow me to do eight cuts with a ring cutter that's two and three quarters inch wide. And like all biscuits, we want to make sure we get a nice clean cut straight down because we want those edges to be as clean and straight as possible. In fact, when you pick one of these up, you'll actually be able to sort of see the layers we did. And what we'll do is cut eight perfect ones out of this. And those will be our best biscuits, our champs, our heroes, our glamour biscuits. But we're definitely gonna save the trimmings and we'll roll that out later to make some extra ones. But for now, let's take our eight perfect ones and transfer them onto a Silpat line baking sheet. And then once we have those transferred on and spaced out, we will dip our thumb into some flour, and then we will press right in the center of each biscuit, about an eighth of an inch down, which is a trick I learned from my good friend who I've never met, Alton Brown, and apparently that helps our biscuits rise nice and straight and high and flat. And that's it, once those have been properly thumbed, we'll go ahead and brush the tops with melted butter. And yes, I do believe that's technically optional, and you could certainly just bake them like this, or if you want, grate some cheese over the top. But when it comes to biscuits, there's no such thing as too much butter. And that's it. Once those are brushed, they're ready to transfer into the center of a 425 degree oven for about 18 to 20 minutes or until they're beautifully golden brown and have risen up nice and high and proud and hopefully look like this. And if you're lucky, some of that cheese has leaked out the sides and caramelized onto the bottom, which may or may not happen. But if it does, I think it looks kind of cool. And you can really see from the side view how beautifully these have risen and then while these are still warm, another optional step is to brush the tops with butter now. And since I had some leftover melted butter from the first time we used it, I went ahead and brushed that over the top, because why not? And then once those are brushed, I like to let these cool down a little bit before we serve them, which you can just do right on the pan. But I always transfer them onto a cooling rack, mostly because I think it looks better for the pictures and the color pops a little better. So I transfer those on and let them cool down a little bit before I grab the worst looking one and went in for a taste. And basically what you're gonna experience here is a beautiful flaky buttery biscuit, a buttery buttermilk biscuit to be exact, that kinda of sorta of tastes like cornbread, with a hint of course of that spicy cheese. So as happy as I was with the looks, I was equally pleased with the taste and texture. And no, a biscuit that has cornmeal and not just all flour is not gonna be quite as light and quite as flaky. But having said that, this was still plenty of both. And you're probably thinking, sure, these eight perfectly cut ones look fine. But I bet the ones you make out of that wadded up ball of scraps aren't going to be as good. Well, you know what? They're not. Going to be as good. But they're still going to be very, very good. And to prove it, I rolled out that wad of scraps. And once I did have that rolled out like this, I went ahead and gave it a nice folding. Possibly overworking it, yes. But we also want, if possible, a smooth top. So I gave it a fold and a little bit of a roll until it was just over about a half inch thick, and I cut out four more, possibly accidentally using a slightly smaller cutter, and then wadded up the scraps and cut two really bad ones, and then prepped and baked those exactly the same way, and believe it or not, they look like this. Oh yeah, those are still pretty good. And again, the four on the right are the ones you saw me punch out, and the two on the left that are kind of ragged were made with the scraps of the scraps, and even those aren't too bad. So the morals of the story are, do not throw away the scraps, and maybe more importantly, even if you horribly overwork things, these are still going to be fairly beautiful and pretty nice to eat. Speaking of which, let me go ahead and finish this up by grabbing two of the good ones and eating those alongside a nice bowl of Brunswick stew, which we just recently posted a video for. And while these pepper jack cornbread biscuits would go good with so many different things, 
They were an absolutely perfect pairing with this. And yes, a nice big bowl of chili would be equally effective. But no matter what you serve these next two, if you like cornbread and you like biscuits, you are gonna love cornbread biscuits, which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.